Welcome back. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Adam Crawford. I'm the Vice President of the West Virginia for State Lodge, or for short, we'll call it the FOB. I'm also an active law enforcement officer and a deputy sheriff here in all county sheriff's office. First off, I want to thank a few of my bosses who are here today who were gracious enough to allow us to use this facility uh, for us all to come here for this special event. Sheriff Mike Rutherford. <laughs> County Commissioners Kent Harper, Tommy Shores, and Ben Salango. <laughs> so I want to thank you all again. Uh, I can't ask for better bosses and a better place to work. I'm proud to work here. Um, it's an honor, and I'm humbled to stand here before you today. The reason we're here is to unveil this beautiful license plate here in my lap, the Back of Blue license plate. This is a wonderful piece of legislation. It was House Bill 2846 that the Fraternal Order of Police and several others diligently worked to get passed this past legislative session. What the plate does is it allows the citizens of the great state of West Virginia to show support for our law enforcement officers by having the option to put this plate on the rear of their vehicles. Now some people may ask, what's the big deal? It's just a license plate. Well, as a police officer, this reason it is a big deal to us. The reason being is that as law enforcement officers, we willingly and bravely serve and protect the citizens of our communities. I think it's symbolic. Um, You know, when we get into this profession, we know we're not going to get rich. We know that the job is dangerous. We signed up for that. Um, we also, we don't expect anything in return. We don't expect, expect any special thank yous or anything like that. However, when a complete stranger approaches you and says, hey, we appreciate what you do. We pray for you. Come home safe with your families every night. It goes a long way with us. It may not sound like a lot, but when somebody takes time out of their day to walk up to you and tell you thank you, and that they're praying for you, and that they care about your safety, it makes it a little bit gratifying doing the job that you do. So with all that said, this license plate gives our citizens a further opportunity to put a license plate to show their support for our law enforcement. Kind of to build on that, um, I haven't been a police officer a real long time. Uh, there's more law enforcement officer experience in this room than probably anywhere I've ever been. Um, but I've been a police officer for about 12 years. And I've had many opportunities to speak with law enforcement officers, not only from this state, but uh, many other states as well. And I must say, I'm blessed and proud to serve not only as a police officer, but a police officer in this state of West Virginia. And speaking with officers from other states, I've listened to officers tell me about problems they have with community support, uh, the community not respecting them, supporting them, their law enforcement administrators not supporting them, not having their back, political figures, politicians not having their back. And it's really a shame. It really is. And my heart goes out to all those officers in other states that are having to endure those, those, those tough hurdles and obstacles as they're just trying to do their job to keep the public safe. I think if you can look around this room, you can draw the conclusion that that's not the case in this state. I'd like to think that we do have a good working relationship for the most part with all the citizens of the state. Nobody's perfect. No person's perfect. No agency's perfect. No state's perfect. But I do think that even though we catch our, kind of take our knocks from other states as far as West Virginia, most of it's in a joking manner, but I would put the quality of our people, of our citizens, and the quality and professionalism of our law enforcement officers have got up against any state in the nation. I really would. 
Now lastly, I want to recognize who this plate really should symbolize. And that's our fallen officers. The ones that made the ultimate sacrifice. Gave their life serving and protecting them. The members of their communities. We have several family members of fallen law enforcement officers here today. They're all seated up here at the front of the room. Now what I'd like to do is recognize each fallen officer and if they have family members here, when I announce the names, I'd like them to please stand. Lieutenant Aaron Crook, Bluefield Police Department. Patrolman Jerry Jones, Charleston Police Department. <laughs> Patrolman Eddie Duncan, Charleston Police Department. <laughs> Lieutenant Delbert Roush, Charleston Police Department. Patrolman Robert Lee Kirk, Fairmont Police Department. <laughs> Deputy Larry Eddie Miller, Putnam County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Deputy Jonathan Jane, Putnam County Sheriff's Office. Trooper Eric Workman, West Virginia State Police. <laughs> Corporal Marshall Bailey, West Virginia State Police. <laughs> now I'd also like to recognize uh, all law enforcement officers that were injured Maybe not only physically, but maybe mentally in the line of duty. This plate needs to symbolize them as well. A couple nights ago, on Wednesday, we had two Capital County deputies that were senselessly wounded by gun violence. However, it, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be up here to stand here and say, and talking with people close to them, they're doing well, and hopefully they make a full recovery. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Now, if I may, I'd like to recognize some fellow FOP members that were very instrumental in getting this bill passed. We have great leadership on the West Virginia State Executive Board for the Eternal Order of Police. It's been an honor in the short time that I've been on the Executive Board to develop relationships with these men, learn from them, and uh, help me grow as a man, a law enforcement officer, and a leader as well. First, I want to recognize State President Steve Walker. <laughs> Steve's a great leader. He's been president of the State Lodge for 16 years. And he's, he's, he's been great for me. I mean, I've, I'm sure I worry him out sometimes asking questions, but, but it's just because I want, I want this organization to continue to grow. Same could be said for uh, Sergeant at Arms David Gentry. <laughs> now Dave's our legislative base, and I'm convinced, I, and I'm, I'm certain that he's not only the most recognized police officer of the legislature, <laughs> that's the legislature during the legislative session, maybe the most well-known person just because he's been up there for so long, uh, hassling people, introducing himself to people. If he doesn't know him, he gets to know him. Dave's great, another great leader. He's been on the board for 24 years. Next behind me, we have State Treasurer Darren McNeil.
As you can tell, he's on deck now. He's chief get up today. He's the chief of Barbersville TV also. He goes by the name Rooster. <laughs> Rooster is also served on the board. Next, we have Chairman of Trustees Eric Miller. Eric was very instrumental in this from the beginning. Um, he, he did a lot of the legwork, coordinating with the DMV to kind of get this, get this ball rolling. He did a great job. Thank you. There are a few, few other members that, uh, that were helpful as well. Um, one of which was a former state board member for 26 years. And I have to say he's my mentor, my best friend. And, uh, he also, also happens to be my dad, Joe Crawford. Also, a couple other members I, want, I wanted to recognize their names, uh, Tom Chennault, Greg Sloan, and Joe Martin. They were also helpful. So as far as the FOP goes, I lastly want to thank one other person that, uh, that has been very helpful to us in any legislative issue that we've had, and that's Carol Fultz. She's our lobbyist for the West Virginia State Lodge, and she's great. Um, she's able to get us face-to-face -face interactions with legislators, um, oftentimes on very short notice. She's able to help us strategize and, and uh, come up with plans to not only get legislation passed that we support, but also to get legislation stopped that we do not support. So I, I, I thought Carol was going to be here today, but I won't see her, but I want to her. Out. <laughs> Finally, I just want to take the last point of personal privilege to express how much of an honor it is to be before you today to serve with the largest and most recognized uh, law enforcement labor organization in the country, the Department of Police. There's truly no better collection of men and women in this nation. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but that's, that's where I stand with it. So, um, now I want to introduce a few other people that were very influential in getting this, uh, this bill passed. person that really got the ball rolling and approached Steve President Walker and thought that this would be a great idea to show law enforcement, show appreciation for law enforcement officers. Um, he wanted, he really, he was really, really adamant that we, that we pursue this and get this done. I'm glad he, I'm glad he stayed on us like he did. He's also the United States Attorney for the Southern District of West Virginia, and I believe he's doing an outstanding job. Um, his support for the Colonel Order of Police and law enforcement officers in general has been overwhelming in the short time that he's been our U.S. Attorney. So with that, all that said, I'd like to turn it over to Mike Stewart, United States Attorney for Southern District of West Virginia. It's very difficult 
There are a lot of interests and a lot of business before the people's body that needs to get passed. But the state FOP worked hard, and they were committed to getting this uh, to, to happen. Steve Walker, and, and hold your applause, I, I, but, but I do want to, at the end, give everybody a big round of applause for all the work. Steve Walker, President of the State FOP, Adam Crawford, Vice President for the State FOP, and a Kanawha County Sheriff's Officer. Darren McNeil, Treasurer and Chief of Barbersville. Dave Gentry, Legislative Ace and former Raleigh County Sheriff. Joe Crawford, St. Albans Chief, and becoming a, a good friend. Our, our kids compete against each other in volleyball. I think my kids going to win this year, but we'll see. Eric Miller in the Charleston P. Although, as soon as I say that, we're going to lose the same old kind of So, I'll pull back that comment. <laughs> Department of Military Affairs and Public Safety Secretary uh, Jeff Sandy and Tom Kirk, the deputy, they do incredible work all the time. The West Virginia Sheriff's Association, Rodney Miller, who's the president, and the West Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles, they have to be pointed out, and if they're here, I'd like them to stand and be recognized. Richard Allen, the director of special plates. Adam Hawley, the acting director of DMV, are you here? Adam is not here. Not here, but please uh, be recognized. This is not easy work, and there's a whole effort to design a plate that you hope folks will embrace and be interested in. The other folks who are here that I just want to point out, uh, retired Chief Ridley of the Ripley Police uh, Department. Chuck Miller, the Kanawha County Prosecutor, does such incredible work here. Commissioner Carver, uh, Commissioner Salango, Hoppy Shores, their commitment, the county commission in Kanawha County's commitment to law enforcement, the rule of law, their support to our communities cannot be understated. It's been unequivocal, their support, and the support they give to our task forces. Colonel Cahill, uh, Chief Smith, Charleston Police Department, Sheriff Rutherford, all the leaders of law enforcement all across West Virginia. It has been the greatest honor of my life. And a lot, of, a lot of you say, what's that? that? That should be for your family. No, no, the, the greatest personal privilege I've ever had is to be the dad of my two kids and uh, to be married to my wife, uh, Katrina, a breast cancer survivor, I will say. Uh, but the greatest honor I've ever had in my life is to be able to stand with these men and women in law enforcement who every day go out into the dangers of society all for what? To make sure we're safe on our streets, that our communities are safe, that we can live peaceably and safely where we, where we choose to make our life. But most important, all of those folks I recognize, and I'm sure I, I, I didn't recognize all the folks that are here, I want to recognize, and, and they're seated in the most appropriate place today, and that is the families of the fallen who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of law enforcement. And i got to tell you, as I've spoken to each of you a year ago when we first made the proposal for this flight, there wasn't a one of you that was not so proud of, of that significant person in your life. Every one of you, I think, came to me and said that my brother or my sister or my son would have done exactly the same thing again. They were so proud of what they were able to do in the community. And that's the story I hear over and over and over again. And all of you will recognize, but please stand up collectively one more time to be recognized by everybody who's here. Two days ago, 
that we had the deputy sheriffs in Campbell County go up to a door, very typical, with a search warrant, and serve that search warrant, but to have gunfire ring out. And uh, thank God that those officers uh, hopefully will be uh, back to, to full health soon. But that was one moment. One of those uh, officers, uh, Jenny Johnston, Deputy Gerald Cremens, Cremens was shot four or five times. One of those bullets grazed his head. Uh, he had surgery yesterday, and uh, I offer my prayers, all of us offer our prayers to both those gentlemen. Uh, but we understand the challenge that our law enforcement officers, every day who go into the field, into the dark of night, into buildings we run from, they run into. These are the most noble, the proudest, uh, the, the strongest among us. They are the ones we, we, we honor every single day. It wasn't only Jimmy Johnston and, and Deputy Cremens, though. Just uh, yesterday, it may have been that same evening, but in St. Albans, uh, two deputy, I think they were deputy uh, sheriffs from here in Kanawha County, were, 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 they, they were responding to a domestic violence incident. And uh, in the process, they were assaulted by the defendant, punched several times, He's facing charges for that, but this is incredibly, incredibly dangerous work that these men and women do every day. And I want to point out that because I think about this all the time, the law enforcement officers that I work with, these are, these are tremendous, tremendously challenging times. Dallas Police Chief David Brown, and, and his words, I wasn't even a U.S. attorney at the time, but I remember hearing his words when that, when that terrible, horrific event happened in Dallas, where those officers were shot down by that killer in Dallas. But he made a point that resonated with me at that time, and as I've worked with law enforcement, resonate with me even more today. He said, quote, we're asking cops to do too much in this country. Every societal failure, we put it off on the cops to solve. Not enough mental health funding, let the cops handle it. Here in Dallas, we've got a loose dog problem. Let's have cops chase loose dogs. Schools fail, let's give it to the cops. That's too much to ask. And I, I want to reiterate that I think those words are incredibly important for us to remember today. That we as parents, we as members of society have a greater obligation. The police can't be the source to solve all our problems. We need to have their backs. We need to support them. They're going to do that brave and dangerous work that we can't do. But at the end of the day, we have a responsibility in our communities to report to law enforcement the things that we see, to support our law enforcement officers, and this is just one small step in that. We're blessed to live in a place that supports law enforcement like we do in West Virginia. I say it half jokingly, like this place will be incredibly well received in West Virginia. But we see in places like Chicago, places like East St. Louis, the danger on those streets. It's a dangerous we shouldn't have to tolerate as a society. Jeff Sessions, who originally gave me the opportunity to serve in this role, in the direction of President Trump, said to me, a basic human right ought to be able to live peaceably and safely in your homes and your communities. It's something I've taken with me every single day, and I think about it every single day, whether it's the west side of Charleston or whether it's those Detroit drug dealers that come into Cabell County. We shouldn't tolerate these things, and we have to be very, very tough in our efforts. I don't think twice about our commitment to national defense. None of us think about that commitment to national defense that we have. We spend great deals of money to make sure we're safe as a country. We need to make sure at the state level we recognize our Department of Defense, our law enforcement officers. We need to make sure we're committed to as many officers as we need, the best equipment, the best training, anything these law enforcement officers need to protect us in our streets and to protect them when they're at work and protect their families from getting that call at the door, that call uh, we have to do. My office has been committed to honoring law enforcement at every opportunity. We move the law enforcement awards, which happen every year from October to, to, to May, when National Police Week is. And one thing I want to invite every member of law enforcement here to do over the course of the next year is let's recommit ourselves to telling our story to the public. Let's make sure as law enforcement officers, we're at those Little League games, we're at the bowling alley, we're at the bingo hall that we're telling our children how important we are to society. It's critical to ensure that culturally, the next generation embrace what we do. Supporting law enforcement not a partisan issue, should never be a partisan issue, we can't let that happen. So I just want to say I'm so proud to be here, to back the blue, this license plate. It's an important statement not only for individual drivers, it's an important statement of our support for law enforcement. They will feed off our support for them. 
I'll point out the special plates are an extra expense. Everybody's going to have to pay for those things. We're in an unusual state. I can't advocate for policy. I'm not advocating for policy. If you support some of these ideas, you can call your representative. <laughs> but uh, when you buy these license plates in West Virginia, none of the dollars go to uh, make sure we have the right equipment or the right training for law enforcement. In fact, it was one of the family members who suggested that, uh, that we ought to commit some of these dollars to equipment. And a number of you have commented to me that it would be wonderful if some of the dollars from this plate could go to uh, law enforcement to make sure we have the right equipment, that they have the right bulletproof vest because the ballistics change all the time. We have to make sure that they're as safe as they can be when they're doing the work that we can. So I hope in the near future there will be some commitment or some consideration uh, from folks in positions of power to consider that in Missouri and in Georgia they already do that, dollars from these plates go to make sure that our officers and our police departments, and it's tough funding in these police departments. We have great, great police departments throughout the Southern District, but some of these smaller towns and communities, it's very, very hard for them to get the dollars or the equipment that they need to make sure that they're as safe as they can be. And if we do anything else, we have to commit ourselves to make sure we're providing every tool necessary to make our folks as safe as they possibly can be so they come home to their loved ones at the end of the day. I thank you again for all your efforts in making this day possible. Everybody who's up here, the governor, the entire team of folks who, who did this. On behalf of the Attorney General of the United States and the Department of Justice, thank you very much. God bless you. Now, Mike probably wasn't going to tell you this, but the person that really makes his office go is Tracy Chapman. <laughs> she, 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 she was very, very, very helpful in getting this put together. I mean, we couldn't have made this event happen today without Tracy. Tracy's standing there in the back there, and Tracy, wait here, everybody. <laughs> Next, I want to introduce the lead sponsor of the bill. Um, who is without a doubt a supporter of law enforcement. Maybe that's just because he is one. Sheriff Rodney Miller, from, retired from Boone County, he's a West Virginia delegate from Boone County. He was the lead sponsor of the bill, and I'd like him to come up here and say a few words for the bill.
the first time I met was when some of us came to the uh, hospital to give blood for him when he was trying to come the So he's lived, he survived. So I get a hold of him. Who gets a hold of Adam? And this whole chain of events start unfolding. I text my wife, where are you? Told me where she was at. Had two cattle getting empty shot. As you guys understand, the next text out of her uh, phone was, are you going? Yep. You walk into the hospital and you see this outpouring, is that a good word? Outpouring of support. You get it really quick. Now we can we can all be safe in our communities and, and we can we can uh, we can wish all the best wishes in the world. But for these guys that do it every day, there's not enough that we can do. There's not enough that we can do for these surviving families. We've got to do more. I agree with our, our uh, United States Attorney that there is not a reason why that these men and women don't have our utmost respect and our ultimate support. So uh, thank you guys for having me and, uh, and uh, keep up the faith because things can get better. Thank you. I can say over the last couple of years that I've been dealing with legislative issues for the state laws. Rodney's door is always open to law enforcement officers in general and the FOP. I'm fortunate to be able to have developed a relationship with you the last couple of years, and I look forward to it with you. Thank you, Rodney. Next, we have West Virginia Delegate Daniel Miller, who is also a great supporter of law enforcement, and he's the vice chair of the House Technology and Infrastructure Committee. He's able to do that. Stead, streamline this bill and uh, get her pushed through. So I'd like to introduce Daniel. Thank you. I can't begin to tell you what an honor it is to be able to stand before the men and women of law enforcement and more especially the families of, of our fallen law enforcement officers. So the bottom of my heart is that I'm the 16th district. Thank you very much. Um, I'd be remiss uh, this morning if I didn't mention that I am happy that we're not announcing the, the families of, of Deputy Kermains and Deputy Johnson um, and having to thank them for that sacrifice. They were wounded, but they get to go home with their families. And that's a reality that each and every one of you face um, every day when you go to work. And as for me, the entire time I'll be in the legislature, when people come and ask for something like this, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'll be a go all day. Now, Adam and, uh, and Steve came up to me on the floor of the house right as soon as we gaveled out of session uh, one day. And uh, they said, Delby, we've got this bill, and, uh, and we've got to get it to run. I know we've got all this sort of stuff going on. Can you help us get it on the agenda? And I said, well, let's walk over and talk to the chairman right now. Let's get it done. And our committee meets on Mondays, and uh, instantly it was added to the agenda. We got ran. Now, I had to have a talk with my attorneys um, for the committee because just like uh, Attorney Stewart was, was saying, um, currently we can't uh, devote any uh, additional dollars from, uh, from any special license plates to um, a particular fund. Um, the state's constitution actually says um, that, that all that money must go into the state's road fund. And I'm happy to announce here today that I will sponsor an amendment to the West Virginia Constitution to allow for special plates to go to a fund for the things for which they're honored. And that means for the safety and support of our law enforcement officers, perhaps for the safety and support of their families. Um, I also want to recognize the folks that, uh, that helped make, make this happen. Uh, Delia Miller, thank you, sir, uh, for what you've done. Uh, to the entire FOP, this was your idea. We just had to sponsor it. Um, to the governor, so this uh, this could not have happened without your support. We can pass a bill all we want, but without your signature on it, it doesn't become a law, and we wouldn't be here today, sir, not for you. So thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a close.
closing, I don't want you to get any parking tickets. So thank you so much. I love all of you. God bless you. And God bless the great state of West Virginia. Thank you. Was there anybody from the DMV that wanted to speak? That figures that I wanted to at least be quiet. Well, last but certainly not least, the man who did the most important task of getting this bill passed, the guy that actually signed it. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Jim Justice.
disgrace them, and they go on. And they just keep going on. Again, all of you, I love you with all my soul. And I thank you in anything, in any way, shape, form, or fashion that comes across my plate. I'll sign any day, anywhere, anything I can do to help. And I mean it as sincerely as a human being can mean it. You know, because what you do is the greatest work on the planet, and you're not respected nor paid to the level that you should be. God bless you and everyone. Thank y'all for having me. Is there anyone else that would like an opportunity to speak? Steve. <laughs> Gotta make sure I didn't forget anybody. Well, lastly, I want to again recognize the families of the fallen officers. This is a great day for us. I'm sure it's a great day for you all. Um, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. If there's anything we can ever do for you all, please let me know. Dover's got my number. I'll give it to any, anyone that be sitting there. If you ever need anything at all, please don't hesitate to call. Okay? With that, I want to thank, uh, thank everybody for coming here today. And uh, Oh, one last thing. Um, the family members that would like to apply for a plate, um, st stick around here because Tracy Chapman Myself and some other people are going to try to help facilitate that. We have conference rooms on either side of the uh, lobby here. We have some other areas that we could probably funnel into too if we need them. Uh, Brother Treasurer McNeil would like to uh, speak please. I was going to tell everyone I was on scene uh, the other night uh, with those deputies. And uh, as I stand here before you and I think about the inception, the idea, and talking with these wonderful families. Uh, I would be remiss to say, back the blue, that the other night, it wasn't about a blue uniform or a green uniform or a black uniform. This man right here came to us a year ago, and, you know, I worked every day over that building over there until I had a chance to come home and uh, lead my agency. But I want to say, blue represents law enforcement altogether. The other night, when those deputies were down, there were so many troopers, deputies from all over the state, and municipal police officers that were rushing to the aid, not only into the state of West Virginia, but we also had uh, the state of Kentucky and the state of Ohio. Um, it's a broad uh, spectrum that was involved the other night. I just wanted to make sure that the color blue represents us all. And that's all I had. Thank you. January 1st, the license plates will be available. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I can't wait to switch mine over. And, uh, and we ought to have that plate and, and, and have it proudly on our vehicles as everything else we do in life. And so, but uh, thank you very much, uh, Delegate. <laughs> Delegate Miller, I apologize for uh, pointing you out. Uh, no, it's, and can, we, can, we, can we end this the right way with a prayer? Yeah. If, if, can, I do, can I say one thing? Sure, absolutely. Folks, uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get through this part when I was talking, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Um, the two deputies that were injured in Cattle County, it's my understanding that they were in the process of conducting an investigation into some uh, persons of interest who had uh, fired into the own a volunteer fire department. So when you think about what these folks do for us, um, the folks that had, that had fired shots in the own a volunteer fire department didn't injure anybody, but they took two fire engines out of service. And my grandfather passed away in a house fire. And what these men and women were trying to do was to stop that from happening for someone else. 
you had people take two fire engines out of service, and, and our boys in blue were out there trying to stop that from happening again. And if these people start turning on their heaters, and somebody has a house fire, Ona VFD actually showed up uh, to my grandfather's house when it burned down. And I lost them. And these folks are trying to make sure that the tragedy that happened for my family and took away one of the biggest mentors in my life doesn't happen to another family. And that's what Back in the Blue means. So folks, January 1st, I encourage you to go out and get these plates. I encourage you to show these people that you support them. And Mr. U.S. Attorney, if you'd like to lead us in prayer, let's hit it the right way. Well, perfectly imperfect, but I think please God, I'd say to the leader in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all you do for us each day. Please watch over the heroes of law enforcement. Watch over all our citizens, our families. We are blessed to live in a place like West Virginia. So proud of the Creator and, and, and what's been done for us here in West Virginia. Sometimes we don't appreciate as much those things, those blessings that have been bestowed upon us. Please watch over our law enforcement. Please back the blue. Watch over all our men and women. 